Hello everyone. Today we will see section 16 on group action on a set. Let a capital G be a group and a capital X be a set. So we are going to see group G acting on a set of capital X and gives elements of capital X. That is an action of G on X is a map star from G cross X to X such that so we have two conditions. The first condition is that E x is equal to x for every x in x where E is the identity element of G and G1 G2 acting on x should be the same as G1 acting on G2 x where G2 x means that G2 is acting on x. Now under these conditions we say that x is a G set. Now before continuing let us have a look at the term permutation. So what is a permutation? A permutation of a set capital A is a function sigma from A to A that is both 1, 1 and 1, 2. So for example, let us consider the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and you can see a rearrangement of the terms that is 4, 2, 5, 3, 1. It's a rearrangement of the set and here you can see that sigma is a permutation which takes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 4, 2, 5, 3, 1. That is 1 is taken to 4, 2 is taken to 2. 3 is taken to 5 and so on. So you can denote this permutation using this type of representation and we can write sigma of 1 is equal to 4 and sigma 2 is equal to 2 and so on. Now the collection of all permutations of capital A is denoted by S suffix capital A and when A is the finite set 1, 2, 3 etc. n we denote the collection of four permutations with the Sn and we call it as the symmetric group on n letters because that's a group that we know. And there can be n factorial elements in that group. Now let us see an example. So let us consider the set 1, 2, 3. So what are the different permutations of this set? So you can see that row naught, row 1, row 2 are the set of even permutations and mu 1, mu 2 and mu 3 forms the set of odd permutations of the set 1, 2, 3. So you have the set of odd permutations means they are row naught, row 1, row 2, mu 1, mu 2 and mu 3. And we know that this group is isomorphic to the dihedral group of degree 3. That is the set of all reflections and rotations of an equilateral triangle with vertices 1, 2 and 3. So here row naught corresponding to 0 degree rotation which is the identity element and row 1 corresponding to 120 degree rotation and row 2 is 240 degree rotation of the equilateral triangle and here mu 1 is the reflection of the equilateral triangle with respect to the angle bisector at the vertex 1 and so on. Now you can see that this row naught, row 1, row 2 that is these three rotations forms a subgroup of D3. So here it is S3 that we have the set of all permutations of the set 1, 2, 3. So let us see what happens if uh, this subgroup acts on this set 1, 2, 3 in the next example. So we consider the set 1, 2, 3 and we are going to see the action of the group rho naught rho 1 rho 2 on 1, 2, 3. You can see that rho naught 1 is 1, rho naught 2 is 2 and rho naught 3 is 3. Now what happens when row 1 is applied? So you can see the corresponding permutation there. So row 1 1 means row 1 applied on 1 which means that it is equal to 2. So row 1 1 is 2, row 1 2 is 3 and row 1 uh, 3 is 1. Similarly third row is also available 3 1 2. Now if you see corresponding to row naught we are getting a permutation of 1, 2, 3 corresponding to row 1, row 2 also we are getting a permutation of 1, 2, 3 which means that corresponding to each element in the group we are getting a permutation, right? So this means that you can have a map which takes each element of the group to an element uh, in the corresponding permutation of 1, 2, 3 and this map you can later see that this map uh, is actually a homomorphism. So we will see it as a theorem and we will prove the theorem. Now let us try to make a general statement from the previous example. So we have an arbitrary set capital X and let us consider a subgroup of all permutations of capital X. So we have X 
is available and capital H is the group acting on capital X. Now let a small x be an element in capital X and a small sigma be an element in capital H. So sigma acting on x means we are getting sigma x but what is sigma? Sigma is one of the permutation of capital X which means that sigma x is sigma of x that is the action of sigma on capital X is its action as an element of Sx. Thus we can see that capital X is an H set. You can prove the other two properties that is the identity element acting on any element of X gives uh, the ele uh, same element and also you can see that sigma on sigma 2 acting on the element X is same as sigma on acting on sigma 2X. Okay that you can prove that and using that you can conclude that capital X is a, an H set. Now we can see a theorem. So let x be a g set. So for each g in g, we need to prove that the function defined by sigma g of x is equal to gx is a permutation. So we can see the second part of the theorem later. So we need to prove that this sigma g is a permutation, which means we need to prove that the sigma g is both 1, 1 and on 2. Now how to prove that sigma g is 1, 1? For that, we start with the sigma g of x1 equal to sigma g of x2 which is same as gx1 equal to gx2. You apply g inverse on both sides. Now after a couple of operations, you can see that you will be having x1 is equal to x2. So we start with the sigma g of x1 equal to sigma g of x2 and ended at x1 equal to x2, which means that sigma g is 1, 1. The map is sigma g is 1, 1. Now we need to prove that sigma g is on 2. For that, we start with an arbitrary element, small x in capital X. And we need to show that there is an element in capital X which is mapped to this element x under sigma g. So you consider g inverse applied on x. So you can see that this element takes you to this particular value of x. That is here sigma g of g inverse x gives you g into g inverse x and in the next step you can see that this is same as x thus for every x in x there is a g inverse x which takes you to that x so thus we proved that sigma g is both 1 1 and 1 2 and hence it is a permutation next let us go to the second part of the theorem so here you have given a map of phi from g to sx defined by phi of g is equal to sigma g so we need to prove that phi is a homomorphism that is we need to prove that phi of g1 g2 is same as phi of g1 into phi of g2 equivalently we need to prove that sigma g1 g2 is equal to sigma g1 into sigma g2 but in order to prove that these two functions are the same we need to show that sigma g1 g2 applied on x is the same as sigma g1 into sigma g2 applied on x for every x in the set to capital X. So let us start with the LHS. So sigma g1 g2 of x is the same as g1 g2 of x uh, by definition of sigma g. Now uh, since x is a g set you can write it as g1 into g2 of x and g2 of x by definition of sigma g it is sigma g2 of x and g1 applied on sigma g2 of x means that it is sigma g1 of sigma g2 of x. Now both sigma g1 and sigma g2 are permutations. So you can have sigma g1 composition sigma g2 on x and that is same as sigma g1 into sigma g2 of x. So you proved LHS equal to RHS. So thus we proved that phi of g1 g2 acting on x is same as phi of g1 uh, into phi of g2 acting on x. So we proved the condition for homomorphism for phi and finally you need to prove that phi of g of x is equal to gx. So if you start with this by the definition of phi you can see that this is same as sigma g of x and uh, which is by definition of sigma g equal to gx. So thus we proved that phi of g of x equal to gx for every x in x and hence the theorem. Next uh, let us see an example. Here we can see that every group is a G set. 
we can choose different group actions here we choose the action defined by star of g1 g2 is equal to g1 g2 note that we need to prove two conditions for g to be a g set namely ex is equal to x and g1 into g2 of x equal to g1 g2 into x but since this this group action is given by the star notation we should be able to prove this using the same terminology and that will be easier if we write out the requirement early that is the first condition can be rewritten as star of ex is equal to x and the second condition we can write like this star of g1 on g2x but what is g2 of x g2x it is star of g2 comma x and that is equal to the right hand side is g1 g2 acting on x which means that it is star of g1 g2 on x now let us prove the steps one by one here the first one is uh, star of e comma x equal to should be equal to x but star of g1 g2 is g1 into g2 which means that star of e x is e into x and e into is x is x so we proved the first one now let us look at the second one here we need to start with the star g1 comma star g2 x g2 comma x and which is equal to star g1 comma what is star g2 x it is g2 into x now star g1 comma g2 x is g1 into g2 x so we reached at g1 into g2 x now what is our requirement we need to show that this is finally equal to star g1 g2 comma x that is we need to show that this is equal to g1 g2 into x now since x is an element of g this is possible using just using the associative property so thus we proved the two conditions and hence every group g is a g set now see the remaining part of the problem you need to show that g is a h set or h is a subgroup of g that you can do using the same technique and do it as a homework now let us take another operation star of hg is equal to hg h inverse and let us prove the two conditions that is we need to prove that star of ex is equal to x but what is star of ex that is ex e inverse and that uh, you can modify to ex e since e inverse e is e and just uh, taking the appropriate association you can finally show that that is equal to x so we proved the first condition now let us look at the second condition so we need to start with the star g1 comma star g2 x is equal to this is equal to by definition what is star g2 x that is g2 x g2 inverse and uh, this is equal to when g1 is applied on g2 x g inverse g2 inverse you will get just g1 g2 x g2 inverse g1 inverse now let us look at the final requirement so we need to finally prove that this is equal to uh, star g1 g2 comma uh, x that is we need to prove that this is equal to g1 g2 into x into g1 g2 inverse now just uh, changing the association we can show that uh, this is equal to uh, g1 g2 into x into uh, g2 inverse into g1 inverse and we know that that is same as g1 g2 inverse and hence we can meet our requirements and uh, using under this uh, operation uh, group action you can prove that again g is an h set now let us see another example here h is a subgroup of g and we consider the set of four left cosets of h in g so what is the group under consideration it is g what is the set under consideration it is the collection of all left cosets of h in g let us see the group action so for a g in g and a left coset xh in lh the group action is defined by g into xh is equal to gx h where x is chosen as a representative from the left coset xh now in order to uh, show that 
this is a well defined operation so that, that is since uh, x is a representative what happens if another representative y is chosen from xh so if y belongs to xh you can see that you can also call it a yh and uh, y is equal to x into small h where h is an element in h so if you start with, again with the g into xh you can see that that is same as g y h since uh, uh, we have chosen the representative y this time and this is equal to g into xh h and uh, changing the association this is same as gx into small h capital h which is equal to gx into capital h so starting from g into xh uh, choosing different representatives x or y we have reached at gx h which means that uh, this operation is uh, this group action is well defined now let us prove the two conditions that is required to uh, show that lh is a g set that is we start with the e into coset xh and uh, that is same as ex h and you can see that that is equal to xh now let us check the second one here if we start with the g1 into g2 into coset xh we can see that this is same as g1 into g2 x uh, h now g1 into a coset g2 x h means that it is g1 into g2 x h now if we change the association it is g1 g2 into x uh, h now once again you can see that this is same as g1 g2 into coset x h note that this is our final requirement and hence we proved that the set lh is a g set now let us see our last example here the group under consideration is d4 so what are this row not row 1 row 2 row 3 they are rotations of degree 0 90 degree 180 degree and 270 degree mu1 and mu2 are uh, flippings with respect to uh, horizontal and vertical axis and delta 1 and delta 2 are the flippings with respect to the diagonal and off diagonal of a square now what is x x is given uh, by this and if you consider this figure you can see that uh, this 1 2 3 4 represents the vertices of the square and the sides are represented by s1 s2 s3 and s4 and two axes horizontal and vertical respect respectively are given by m1 and m2 and the diagonals diagonal and off diagonal are given by d1 and d2 the center point is denoted with c and the midpoint of the sides s1 s2 s3 s4 are given by p1 p2 p3 and p4 now what happens when d4 uh, acts on capital x that is uh, this set of points now we can see that rho naught is the uh, is the zero degree rotation of the square which means that when rho naught is applied nothing happens that is there is uh, the positions of the points and the axis and the diagonals are the same and when you take the 90 degree anti clockwise rotation uh, that is rho 1 you can see that uh, 1 is in the position of 2 2 is in the position of 3 3 is in the position of 4 and so on so you can see the corresponding uh, changes in the uh, elements of the x and if you note you can see the corresponding changes for row 2 row 3 mu 1 mu 2 and delta 1 and delta 2 now you go through the table and verify yourself the action of other elements in the group on this set and you can finally see that x is a d4 set we will be able to see more properties of this action in the next class thank you